his return and let's stand to sing all four verses. When Jesus comes to reward his servants, whether it be noon or night, faithful to him will he find us watching with our lamps all trimmed and bright. Oh, can we say we are ready, brother, ready for the soul's bright home? Say, will he find you and me still watching, waiting, waiting when the light shall come? If at the dawn of the early shall call us one by one. When to the Lord we restore our talents, will he answer they well done? Oh, can we say we are ready, brother, ready for the soul's bright home? Say, will he find you and me still watching? Waiting, waiting when the Lord shall come. Have we been true to the trust he left us? Do we seek to do our best? If in our hearts there is not condemns us, we shall have a glorious rest. Oh, can we say we are ready? For the soul's bright home Say will he find you and me still watching Waiting, waiting when the Lord shall come Blessed are those whom the Lord finds watching In his glory they shall share If he shall come at the dawn or midnight, will he find us watching there? Oh, can we say we are ready, brother, ready for the soul's bright home? Say, will he find you and me still watching, waiting, waiting when the Lord shall Always looking with expectancy for the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. And while we are looking and waiting for him and watching, we are busy doing his will and his business. Tonight the message is entitled Christ in all the scriptures. And we are in Acts chapter 8. You recall last week we looked at verses 29 and 30 with Philip running to obey. We learned a number of principles from that as the Spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself unto this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Esaias and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? We saw that specific directions come from God when we are in fellowship with God, doing what God has called us to do at that moment. The second thing we learned is that there are three specific directions in the command, and we must not miss any of those if we would be involved in personal witnessing. First, go near. In personal witnessing, you have to be close to the target. Secondly, you have to join yourself. Don't expect God to use somebody else to do the job that he has called you to do. And then God told Philip, this chariot. God directed Philip to witness to perhaps the most difficult person on the road that day. When we have someone to whom we have gone near, to whom we have joined ourselves, now it is time to witness. And God calls us many times to, as it were, change gears. We saw that Philip, who had been walking, now has to begin to run. And God oftentimes jerks us out of our comfort zone and gives us what appears to be an impossible task. And yet what God gives us a task to do, he always provides the opening of the doors for that task. 
We learn principle number four, that we should be alert and sensitive to God's call to get engaged immediately after long periods of apparent dull inactivity. We saw the illustrations of Noah, 120 years of dull inactivity that seemed to be going nowhere but building a boat in the desert. And then suddenly the ark was finished. God gave them a week to repent. And then God told Noah and his family get on board and God himself closed the door. We remembered Abraham wandered for years in faith, never saw the fulfillment of God's covenant promises, but then God gave him the descendants as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable, Hebrews 11:12. We remembered Moses. He spent 40 dull years in the desert doing a nowhere job before God called him to Egypt to become the leader of God's people. We saw Elijah Three long, dull years in the wilderness at the Brug Kedron, being fed by nasty birds. And then finally, God immediately threw him into action against Jezebel and the prophets of Baal and the 400 prophets of the grove. And at the end of that, gave him supernatural power to outrun the chariot of Ahab. And we saw many parallels between that chariot and also the chariot that Philip ran to. Then we saw that we need to be ready to run when God calls you to run. You have to be in the right location. You have to be on time. You have to be at the starting line, not just someplace on the field. You have to be dressed for the race, wearing the team uniform, that is the armor of God, which God has given to us in Ephesians chapter 6. We have to have our place on the line and be alert for the starting gun to go off not looking around, not paying attention to other things. We have to be ready to run when God calls us to run because delay is not merely delay, it is disobedience. We need to remember that we have to be running hard and don't be afraid to run hard. God gives you the strength to run when he calls you to run. We need to remember that evil men are also running in the race. We need to pay attention because we might be running with the wrong chariot. And we talked about that some last week. If you would run the race well when God calls you to run, you must know the word of God. And the purpose of running when God calls is so that, one, you will receive an eternal prize, and number two, so that you will not be a castaway in service. The New Testament makes that clear. Many have been running in the past and then have stumbled off the track. Paul talks about in Galatians 5, your running at the call of God can be hindered. And the question is, what does hinder us? You did run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? Your running has eternal consequences. You are in a relay race, the baton, baton handed off to each succeeding generation by those who know now watch you from the stands, those great cloud of witnesses who are watching you run your race. And we saw at last, Philip was ready to run and obey, instantly ready to leave his comfort zone, instantly prepared with a knowledge of the scriptures, alert for personal up-close opportunity to witness concerning the Lord Jesus Christ. And God blessed him with planting a seed that brought revival to the entire nation of Ethiopia a seed that lasted for many years. And so we asked the question in closing last week, are you ready to run to obey? Tonight, the message is entitled Christ in all the scriptures, and we're looking at verses 31 through 35. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. The place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb before his shearers, so he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation his judgment was taken away, and who shall declare his generation, for his life is taken from the earth? And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this? Of himself or of some other man? Now verse 35, our key verse. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and
and preached unto him Jesus. Gracious Heavenly Father, we pray that tonight you will help us to understand that Christ is in all the scriptures. And if we truly know the scriptures, no matter where someone is in his or her spiritual quest, we can begin at the same scriptures and preach unto him Jesus. We pray, Father, that you will help us to see how this is so as we do a, a quick overview of many of the Old Testament passages in which Christ is found. We pray that you will give us encouragement to see that our Lord Jesus Christ is indeed in all the scriptures, for we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I was thinking when I initially prepared for this message that we would try to go through all 39 books of the Old Testament and show you how Christ is found in each one. I'm going to try to make it at least halfway through tonight. I'm not sure that we'll make it, but uh, we're going to try to get... Uh, as far as the book of Esther and see parallel passages from the Old Testament that speak of Christ and the New Testament passages that show him as the fulfillment. Some of these are typological where Christ is seen in specific types of the Old Testament. Some of them are direct prophetic passages that speak of him and what he will do. Others are the Lord Jesus Christ appearing in the Old Testament and then the New Testament quoting the verse to show that that was Christ who appeared in those particular passages. Not sure we'll be able to cover them all. We're hoping to get as far as the book of Esther tonight. Now the portion of text that was read by the Ethiopian eunuch in this passage that we just looked at is from the book of Isaiah. It's from Isaiah chapter 53 and he was reading two specific verses out of that. Of course, the entire chapter deals with our Lord Jesus Christ. But the two verses he was reading were Isaiah 53, 7 and 53, 8. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation for he was cut off out of the land of the living, for the transgression of my people was he stricken. And Philip began at that passage, and you and I know it well, because, frankly, I think it's because most of us, having heard preaching on the New Testament, know that that is a messianic chapter. It's a chapter that is so powerful and so appropriate for leading Jews to Christ in particular, that many English translations that are used in the synagogues do not translate that chapter, they leave it written in Hebrew. So that those Jews who read it in the synagogue will not recognize in it the prophetic nature of the passage as it points to the Lord Jesus Christ. But very clearly, here in the book of Isaiah, we find that the Lord Jesus Christ is clearly portrayed, and we could read that entire passage, you know there are many portions of it that deal with his crucifixion and his resurrection. But we need to be ready to see Christ in all of the scriptures because Jesus himself said that he is there. He said so in Luke chapter 24, and I'll begin reading in verse 13 and following. It's the road to Emmaus, I'm sure you're familiar with that passage. It says, And behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem about threescore furlongs. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holden that they should not know him. And he said unto them, what manner of communications are these that ye have one to another as ye walk and are sad? And the one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answering, said unto him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem, and hast not thou known the things which are come to pass there in these days? And he said unto them, What things? And they said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty indeed, and word before God and all the people, and 
how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. But we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And besides all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulcher. And when they found not his body, they came, saying that they had also seen a vision of angels, which said that he was alive. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulcher, and found it even so as the women had said, but him they saw not. Then he said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart, to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. It's amazing as we contemplate that, they knew the Old Testament prophecies. They had heard the testimony of the women that the resurrection had taken place. They had heard the testimony of the apostles who had gone to the sepulcher and found it even so as the women had said. And they believed not. They were filled with sadness. They were walking away from Jerusalem. They were walking home. You see, Jesus said they were fools. The man who hears and knows the truth but because it doesn't fit within the tiny capsule of his reason, refuses to believe, will walk away from the truth. Here the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ follows them up. He says to them that they are slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. They knew what the prophets had said, but they did not believe it. Many of us, I'm afraid, do not know what the prophets have said concerning Christ. If someone were to say to you, show me Christ in Nehemiah, show me Christ in 2 Samuel, show me Christ in Obadiah, could you do it? Tonight I want to give us an illustration going straight through the list of Old Testament books of places where Jesus is found. Now there are hundreds and hundreds of more places where Jesus is found, but I want to give you at least one illustration out of each of these books of the Old Testament where our Lord Jesus Christ is seen. We begin with Genesis, very simple, one that I think you probably know. In Genesis 1.1, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. New Testament, John 1, 1 through 3. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. Jesus in Genesis 1, 1. Exodus, and those of you who are with us this morning... We'll recognize this right away. Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers hath sent me unto you, and they shall say unto me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. Fulfillment, John 8 56 through 58. 
Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. He saw it and was glad. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. Leviticus. Leviticus 4.35 And he shall take away all the fat thereof, as the fat of the lamb is taken away from the sacrifice of the peace offering. And the priest shall burn them upon the altar according to the offerings made by fire unto the Lord. And the priest shall make an atonement for his sin that he hath committed, and it shall be forgiven him. Fulfillment, John 1.29 The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him, and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Numbers. Numbers 150. But thou shalt appoint the Levites over the tabernacle of testimony, and over all the vessels thereof, and over all the things that belong to it. They shall bear the tabernacle, and all the vessels thereof, and they shall minister unto it, and shall encamp round about the tabernacle. Fulfillment. And we went through, of course, you know, the tabernacle in great detail, showing how each article in the tabernacle points to Christ. But in summary, Hebrews 9.11. But Christ, being come and high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 18.18. 18. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren like unto thee, that is, like unto Moses, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. John 6, 14. Then those men, when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did, said, This is of a truth that prophet that should come into the world. And again, this passage referred to in Acts chapter 3, verses 20 through 23. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which was before preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things, which God hath spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. And now here, verse 22, he quotes that passage out of Deuteronomy 18. For Moses truly said unto the fathers, a prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren like unto me. Him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. And it shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. Pointing to Christ. Joshua. Joshua 1.9. A verse that I memorized as a very young child. Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord, that's Jehovah, thy God, is with thee whithersoever thou goest. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in Matthew 28, 20, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you alway, even unto the end of the world. The Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Again, Hebrews 13, 5. Let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as ye have, for he hath said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. Christ in Joshua, and many other places in Joshua. Judges. Very interesting. A phrase that... It, occurs in the song of Deborah and Barak, repeated in the book of Psalms, quoted in the book of Ephesians. Awake, awake, Deborah, awake, awake, utter a song, arise, Barak, and lead thy captivity captive, thou son of Abinoam. Psalm 68, 18. Thou hast ascended on high, thou hast led captivity captive, Thou hast received gifts for men, yea, for the rebellious also, that the Lord God might dwell among them. Ephesians 4.8, speaking of Christ. 
Wherefore he saith, When he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive, and gave gifts unto men. Ruth, Ruth 4.17 And the women, her neighbors, gave it a name, saying, There is a son born to Naomi, and they called his name Obed. He is the father of Jesse, the father of David. Matthew 1.17 so all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations, and from David until the carrying away unto Babylon are 14 generations, and from the carrying away of Babylon unto Christ are 14 generations. 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel 16, 13. Then David took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah, anointed him with oil in the midst of his brethren. Hebrews 1.9, speaking of Christ, Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. Second Samuel chapter 5, verse 12. And David perceived that the Lord had established him king over Israel and that he had exalted his kingdom for his people Israel's sake. Anointed king, exalted king. Matthew 2.2 2. Hear the wise men saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. 1 Kings, chapter 1, verses 33 and 34. Here is David on his deathbed. And he's told that one of his sons is planning to do a self-anointing as king down at the springs of Gihon. Bathsheba and Nathan have come in to tell him of this and to remind him of the promise that Solomon, his son, would be the king. The king also said unto them, Take with you the servants of your Lord, and cause Solomon my son to ride upon mine own mule, and bring him down to Gihon. And let Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet anoint him their king over Israel, and blow ye with the trumpet, and say, God save King Solomon. The triumphal entry of Jesus as king into Jerusalem, Matthew 21.5. Tell ye the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy king cometh unto thee, meek and sitting upon an ass, and upon a colt, the foal of an ass. Solomon, the greatest and wisest king of the Old Testament, Christ, the one who is our wisdom. Second Kings. In Second Kings chapter 2, verses 7 and following, Fifty men of the sons of the prophets went and stood afar off to view, and they too stood by Jordan. And Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together and smote the waters, and they were divided hither and thither, so that they too went over on dry ground. And it came to pass, when they were gone over, that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. And he said, Thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be so, but if not, it shall not be so. And it came to pass, as they still went on and talked, that behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire, and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elisha saw it, and he cried, My father, my father, the chariots of Israel and the horsemen thereof. That, by the way, is a phrase referring to the Shekinah glory of God. And the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more, and behold, he took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two pieces. Our Lord Jesus Christ at the ascension. And he led them out as far as Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And it came to pass, while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. And they stood gazing after him into heaven. The book of Acts tells us that when he ascended, they stood there gazing and 
Two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said unto them, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? The same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. And immediately after that, just as in the case of Elisha, who saw Jesus go up into heaven, the Holy Spirit came, the next chapter, Acts 2, and descended upon those disciples on the day of Pentecost. First Chronicles, chapter 3, verse 1. Now these were the sons of David. Matthew 1, 1. The book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Second Chronicles, chapter 1, verse 8. And Solomon said unto God, Thou hast showed great mercy unto David my father, and hast made me to reign in his stead. Now, O Lord God, let thy promise unto David my father be established, for thou hast made me king over a people like the dust of the earth in multitude. Give me now wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before this people, for who can judge this thy people that is so great. And God said to Solomon, Because this was in thine heart, and thou hast not asked riches, wealth, or honor, nor the life of thine enemies, yet neither hast thou yet asked for long life, but hast asked for wisdom and knowledge for thyself, that thou mayest judge my people over whom I have made thee king. Wisdom and knowledge is granted unto thee, and I will give thee riches and wealth and honor, such as none of the kings that have been before thee, neither shall there be any after thee have the like. Solomon and wisdom. Solomon and reigning over God's people. Now our Lord Jesus Christ, 1 Corinthians 1.30. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the epitome of wisdom. Ezra, Ezra 1, 2. Thus hath Cyrus, king of Persia, the Lord God of heaven, hath given me all the kingdoms of the earth and he hath charged me to build him an house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Our Lord Jesus Christ, of course, as we look at the great prophecies in Ezekiel and elsewhere, will be the one who builds the temple at Jerusalem, but he was challenged about another temple, which he would build. John 2.19 At the beginning of his ministry, the Lord Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. And as we know, he spoke not merely of the earthly temple, but of the temple of his body, which after three days would rise from the dead. Nehemiah. Nehemiah 4.9. Nevertheless, we made our prayer unto our God, and set a watch against them day and night, praying and watching and building the wall. Matthew 26, 41. Our Lord's words to his disciples. Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Esther. Esther chapter 6, beginning in verse 6. So Haman came in, and the king said unto him, What shall be done unto the man whom the king delighteth to honor? Now Haman thought in his heart, To whom would the king delight to honor more than to myself? And Haman answered the king, For the man whom the king delighteth to honor, let royal apparel be brought, which the king useth to wear, and the horse that the king rideth upon, and the crown royal which is set upon his head. And let his apparel and horse be delivered to the hand of one of the king's most noble princes, that they may array the man 
with all whom the king delighteth to honor, and bring him on horseback through the street of the city, and proclaim before him, Thus shall it be done to the man whom the king delighteth to honor. Then the king said to Haman, Make haste, and take the apparel and the horse as thou hast said, and do even so to Mordecai the Jew that sitteth at the king's gate. Let nothing fail of all that thou hast spoken. Then took Haman the apparel and the horse and arrayed Mordecai and brought him on horseback through the street of the city and proclaimed before him, Thus shall it be done unto the man whom the king delighteth to honor. No doubt your thoughts immediately turn to Revelation 19 where our Lord Jesus Christ, arrayed in his royal crown, arrayed in the white robes of righteousness, at the head of the great army and great honor given to him, we see the man who was humiliated, Mordecai, raised to the position where he is crowned as a king. Romans tells us, for as it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess to God. And we know that that is a reference to the Lord Jesus Christ because that same passage out of the Old Testament is quoted in Philippians 9 through 11. Speaking of Jesus, Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Just skimming the surface. But as we look through these books of the Old Testament, every one of them gives us a picture of our Lord Jesus Christ. Every one of them gives us prophecies concerning our Lord Jesus Christ. Every one of them gives us types of our Lord Jesus Christ. Beginning at Moses and all the prophets, expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. The Lord willing, we'll pick up next week with part two, starting with the book of Job. Our gracious Heavenly Father, how we thank you once again that Christ is in all the scriptures. There are illustrations of him types of him, pictures of him, so numerous that we cannot number them. We look at the Old Testament characters in the book of Genesis who portray Christ, such as Joseph. We look at many passages in the prophetic scriptures which foreshadow his coming. We look at the types and the pictures that are given to us in his ancestor David and in Samuel and others of the judges. We thank you, Father, that he is seen as portrayed through his genealogy in the books of Chronicles and Kings and Ruth. We find Christ in all the scriptures. Help us to remember that at any time when someone comes to us with a portion of scripture, that we, begin, we can begin at that portion of scripture and preach unto them Christ. Help us to be ready. Help us to be prepared. Help us to be students of the Word of God so that when opportunity arises, we will be able to take advantage of it. And then your Word, which is quick and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword, will be the tool that is used by your hands as a skillful surgeon to pierce even through the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of, a jo of the joints and marrow and would be a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Help us to be those who know and who use your word to point others to Christ. For we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen.